What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbells and Trails podcast. I'm your host, Brett, back with another episode. Uh, like I've kind of hinted at and promised last week, I guess, this episode is about habit. Um, I finished reading or listening to uh, Atomic Habit by James Clear, which was an amazing book. But I will be honest, I did not end up finishing the power of habit, but I've read about two thirds of it. So I'm not fully finished on that, but I think personally I did prefer atomic habit a little more. I feel like it, it allowed a uh, better breakdown of how to kind of implement certain stuff into your own lifestyle and change your personal habits and um, kind of allowed it to, um, allowed it to be something you can actually implement into your life where I feel like the power of habit kind of showed you the power of habit and what it can do in large scale situations like changes in uh, large companies stuff like that or or just um I mean even even on a personal level on how the the brain like more on scientific stuff in the sense of how the brain reacts to habit and studies done because I believe the power of habit is an older book than atomic habit I don't know the actual dates that these books were written but they are um they are similar obviously with the, the topic but take a, a different form of how they kind of explain so I'll be using both of the these books as references um uh, more from Atomic Habit just because I think it, it works better. Uh, but I guess uh, let, let's, you know, well, let's kind of get into it. I was going to kind of do a catch up of the past week, but not much has happened. So I don't know really what to tell you guys. It, it's been uh, fairly uneventful, but, um, you know, we're, we're trying to trying to move, trying to figure out stuff. I, I finished this book. I'm trying to implement it into my own life in certain ways, which I'll kind of talk about here in a bit, but, um, and then just trying to figure out what to do with the podcast, how to kind of make things run a little smoothly and, uh, figure out topic ideas and stuff like that. I think if possible, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I'm hoping next week to have some guest on I don't know who it's gonna be exactly like I said I can't promise anything I'm gonna try I'm gonna see what can happen but we'll, we'll go from there um, I am gonna hopefully here soon I need to look into uh, certain um, uh, c cameras to use and do stuff like that because I would love to bring a visual format of the podcast to you guys um, and I would like to set up a, a studio, but the room I would use it for because I can't really use the room I use now. Uh, I mean, where I record is in my bedroom, but um, it's not necessarily large enough to actually use and set up for a, a studio like I'd want it to, where I could have two or three people possibly come in and sit at a table and, and record an episode. So uh, eventually here, hopefully in the next month to two months I'm gonna try working on that and uh, kind of go from there and I, I will probably uh, post some behind the scenes stuff as I kind of work on it um, with you guys on Instagram and uh, we'll go from there you know because uh, I, I want to be able to bring that visual aspect to it for uh, people that possibly watch or, or listen at the moment just listen on YouTube um, because I feel like it just kind of adds an extra bit to it, uh, and it's it's quite amazing. But, all right, so let's kind of um, get into this. So, habit. Um, habit's pretty amazing, I feel like, at this point. I, I've learned quite a bit on the scientific aspect, uh, different ways to implement it, and um, what to do to change your habits and stuff like that but um i feel like with this book in particular with atomic habit it 
does it a little differently because obviously habit is a very important thing but it kind of relates to other stuff I've read and researched on my own but for different things um like without realizing it I have set up habits within the past couple years of my life that have had a larger impact than I would have realized and part of that was just um going to the gym and working out and and uh, Noah was actually the one to kind of get me to start this and kind of made it a habit for me because he forced me into it kind of thing like I both wanted to but he um let's just say he's basically a free personal trainer for me for a hot minute and he was the one that kind of helped implement and make that habit possible and because of that it without me realizing at the time over the past two years has had a very large impact on my life just because that one little push to basically figure out a way to better myself through physical means implemented itself into my life and then changed my mindset to bring that in other aspects not only physically but learning bettering myself as a employee in certain ways and working hard and discipline in other aspects of my life that kind of changed the way I handle certain situations. And that is one of the main things that James Clear talks about in his book. He's talked about habit for years now, and he decided to make this book just because he's had blogs on this for years. And one of the things he talks about, which I realized is also very similar to investing, is that habits in general kind of compound, just like investing. If you just even put in a dollar a day for, let's say, 30 years, that dollar in general with compounding through, through um the market is going to be worth more, but just the continual investment of doing something small, that little amount every day will be worth so much more in the end. And so he kind of takes that same um, format and kind of puts it into habit, which makes a lot of sense. Um, he actually breaks it down in the sense of if you make yourself 1% better every day, for one year, by the time it's over, you are 37.78 times better than you were. And if you do the opposite, where you're 100% worse every day for a year, you're 0.03% of where you were. So you've dropped dramatically. And... um. So, yeah, basically it says the effects of small habits compound over time. Um, so if you do get 1% better at the every day, by the end of the year, you're nearly 37 times better after one year, which makes a lot of sense. It, it, it's, the, it, it's what he tries targeting in this book is trying to make small efforts of change that over time will build into something better. Um which I've never necessarily thought about it that way, but it makes a lot of sense. And it's some of the stuff I'm trying to implement now. Um, I guess, uh, let me use myself as an example. I mean, after reading this book and in general, um, the past couple weeks being out of the gym and doing some other stuff and my routine kind of being tossed around and because of how my routine was set up, it kind of allowed it to be more fragilely broken. And one of those things was, especially with the gym situation, I would typically work out in the evenings after work. And um, now I'm doing it in the mornings. I'm waking up at five o'clock every morning, besides the weekends, um, to go work out for an hour uh, before work. And it kind of takes that... Um, it takes away the chance of something coming up where it gives me a, a reason not to go to the gym. So this kind of makes sure I'm there every day. So it's just like little stuff and little things I'm trying to change now to kind of um, 
just kind of make small little changes that will probably help me in the long run. And uh, so, and on this, with the book, he, he has uh, little cheat sheets on his own website and templates for you to use. We'll kind of go over some of those templates here in a bit, um, which I think I'm going to implement. I believe he also has a habit, Atomic Habit Journal, that I am probably going to buy because I feel like it will definitely help. And that is one thing I realized when reading the book is that, which is something I've realized that I just haven't done enough myself, is that physically writing stuff out or making a schedule or actually planning stuff helps you to actually stick to things because it's more readily available in your brain and kind of cemented in as this is what I have to do part like there's several ways to do it that makes it makes your results more likely one is just thinking it and then if you think I need to do this this and that that's like the first step and it (laughs) the likelihood of you doing it is definitely the lowest and then if you say it out loud to yourself the likelihood of you do it definitely doing it definitely rises but you actually physically writing out what you need to do and when and seeing that has a different effect where you're overall compared to those other two options, you're way more likely to actually stick to what you, you want to do. So, um, so through this, he also has little uh, graphs and stuff that he used throughout the book. And, uh, so I'll kind of go over one and kind of help explain this. Um, eventually whenever, for if I do something like this again, whenever I do get the um, visual aspect of the podcast started, uh, I might actually be able to make this where, um, at least on the YouTube section, I can actually pull some of this stuff up. So uh, keep that in mind for the future. Uh, this is different st- stuff I want to hopefully implement to make, make this better. Um, so he says here, uh, we often expect progress to be linear, but very least we hope it will come quickly. In reality, the re- results of our effect, uh, or whoa, the results of our efforts are often delayed, and it's not until months or years later that we realize the true value of the previous work we've done. This can result in a valley of disappointment, where people feel discouraged after putting in weeks or months of hard work without experiencing any results. However, this work is not wasted; it was simply being stored and not until much later will the full value of the previous effort be revealed so in this he kind of has a graph results over time and he shows the value of disappointment what you should think happen and in your head you think it's going to be a linear progression but in all reality um, depending on what you're doing it's a very slow progression until you reach basically like the breaking point that kind of kicks those results into place and you won't realize it it's kind of like the same thing with working out even though at this point like he said it takes months or years to realize what you've done i am not the same person i was two years ago mentally physically all the above i've changed dramatically and and throughout the process i don't think i realized it like i would see numbers on the scale but as I have talked in past podcasts there for a while, I floated around the same weight. And sometimes when you look at numbers, it's a great motivator at times or something to pay attention to in certain situations. But it can also have negative effects because then you feel like you're not doing something right. But when all reality is that just by doing the stuff you're doing, you're working towards the right thing. You just haven't hit the point where the results kind of flutter in. And it takes time, especially in the world of fitness. You're not going to lose 20 pounds overnight. You're not going to be skinny and have a six pack. It all starts with small habits, just from eating healthier, skipping that slice of pizza, uh, going on a walk, actually going to the gym and making that a habit to then months to years later, you being way healthier than you ever were. At first, you might not necessarily lose a lot of weight, but your overall heart health or your heart rate will uh your resting heart rate will lower like there's things that you won't necessarily notice that are very vital especially in the category of health that will slowly progress without actual physical 
um, no, notice. And then another thing he talks about that made a lot of sense to me after I heard it, but I've never thought about it, is that there's three layers of behavior change. And those three things are outcome, processes, and identity. And most people, I feel like most of the time, kind of, um, so there, there's those three levels of change, change in your outcomes, processes, and identity. So I feel like most people are making outcome-based habits. So they want to lose 10 pounds. They want to uh, try my, a lot of my stuff is based on fitness, but um, you want to have a clean house. You want to uh, do, do better at work. You want to study more. You want to uh, like do all these things. You want to read more books. You focus more on the outcome of what the habit will be more than the identity of what you want to become. So he kind of says that with outcome-based habits, the focus is on what you want to achieve when identity-based habits, the focus is who you want to wish to become. So when I first heard that and he talked about it, it kind of hit me in a different way that I wasn't expecting, where I was like, it, not thinking about it, it made a lot of sense. Because it's like, I personally in the past have focused more on what I want to achieve more than changing my actual identity and how I think about things in the sense of I want to lose weight is the goal or I want to hit a certain weight or I want to do this and that instead of actually wanting to change my mindset and my head and how I talk to myself to be um, like I want to be an organized person I want to be healthy I want to be fit I am, or I am fit, I am healthy. Like you gotta change the way you look at yourself and that in, its, in itself will have an effect on how you look at certain situations. So one of the examples he uses was if someone offers you a smoke and someone, or a cigarette, and someone says, oh, I'm trying to quit, compared to if someone says, I'm a non-smoker or I don't smoke, it is makes you think that you still need it in the back of your mind when you say i'm trying to quit and it's a challenge and you still identify as a smoker that is trying not to smoke where if you identify as a non-smoker it changes what you're trying to do even in your head so it's it kind of has a more psychological effect on how you treat yourself it's kind of like how I think there's a quote from uh, Bruce Lee and kind of how like what it's not good to necessarily talk badly about yourself or in a negative way because words have power. And if you speak that into existence, even if it's towards yourself, it's going to have an effect. And it's even if you're joking, it's. I've done it before and it's not necessarily something you want to do because it definitely puts you in a different um, way of responding when in all reality it's like you got to look at what you possibly have achieved and the little um, victories you've had along the way and to keep pushing. You got to look at things differently. It's slightly about changing your mindset and your perspective to have a larger effect in the long run. So in, in the situation of trying to change your identity, I'm trying to do that myself. Like I need to personally probably start writing down um, some of the things I want to do, I want to change. There's certain habits I want to uh, start implementing. But like part of it is um, like I'm getting back into the gym, but I want to be a more organized and clean person. Like that that's something I've I want to be, not necessarily... I want to have a clean house, but I want to be more organized. So there's stuff I'm trying to do, like a new habit that I've started that I've never done ever in my life. I don't think at all, <laughs> looking back at it, is I've started making my bed every morning. And it takes me 10 seconds. But it's that little change in how I handle my mornings in the sense of instead of leaving my bed fully disheveled 
I take the time before I leave my bedroom to straighten my covers and fold it down, put my pillow back. And another thing that I do, because I, what one thing I'm trying to do, I am a reader. I, I, I have, it was a habit that I had really strongly as a child. I read a lot. I was the kid in school where you would find me in elementary or middle school it, it, well, elementary in particular, but if we were going from the classroom to the gym or the classroom to the cafeteria or to another classroom, I was a kid that I was in line, but my head was turned down, stuck in a book. I'd be reading as we walked. I used to read at every possible free moment I had. I think one of those reasons was at that time, it's before smartphones and before I had a smartphone. I wish I honestly had that habit more than I do now. I wish I just read every time I was bored than get on Instagram or some st stupid thing like that. that. That's something I'm trying to change. But one of the things I do when I make my bed is I set a book on my covers so that it is there every night when I go to bed. Before I go to sleep, I read for a little bit in that book. And it's trying to basically implement little things just to make that a part of my routine and kind of change my um brain brain activity is that there yeah something like that but um so it's just about the little things and uh we'll kind of get into that a little more i want to try getting through some of this but okay so with habits there are four main stages there's the cue the craving the response and the reward so all habits are started from some form of cue or something that you see that kind of, um, well, when, when you get the cue, it, it basically causes the craving towards whatever it is you're doing. And then that craving is what makes you to then do your routine or respond to it. And then by doing that habit, by the end of it, you then get whatever reward it is. So the reward is what you're craving. And it just slowly but surely makes makes it a, a routine and a habit um, over time. And some of it is stuff you don't notice. So one of the things he does talk about through the book is, oh, let me see here. So he talks about different ways to kind of make or get rid of better habits. So if I go to some of his templates here, so he has several templates. So throughout the book, he talks about some of them. One of the first ones he talks about is a habit scorecard template. So basically he says for you to start changing your habits and to make stuff a little like kind of figure out what you need to keep change or that are neutral. He says to write down everything you do every day. What is your natural routine and habit when you're first trying to do this? So he'll say by like make a list of your daily habits, like start from the beginning of your day, write down each habit you do, wake up, turn off the alarm, make your bed, brush your teeth, blah, 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 and just go through, through your day. Write down all your habits and then go through and uh, put a plus mark if it's a good habit, minus if it's bad, equals if it's neutral so he kind of explains he's like making your bed probably good brushing your teeth i think uh like wake like waking up turning on your alarm neutral like there's just little stuff it, and it's just going through there so you can actually physically see all the stuff you do what's worth your time what's a waste of your time basically in the sense of um what habits aren't aren't good for you but you think you are or th think they are and um so it's just like kind of identifying different things you might need to do that would help you in the long run or um implement uh intentions uh implementation or what implementation intentions so it basically is um it's like writing this down is kind of like a uh, to create a new habit is you got to kind of force yourself to when you write it down and you actually plan on when you do it it was something that was talked about in both of these books is 
if you make it a physical reminder or a schedule of what you, what it is you want to do, you're more likely to do it. So he basically even has a format. So it's basically like, I will blank. I will brush my teeth. I will read. I will blah, blah, blah at blank time and blank location. And it's basically forcing you to set up these things to write out exactly what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and where you're going to do it. And like I said earlier, that part of writing it out helps you to understand. And then also it gives you no laxy daisy BS on when you're actually going to do it or where. Because if you're like, oh, I'm going to start working out. If you say that, that's one thing. But if you actually put down when you're going to work out and where you're going to do it, it gives you less leeway in actually fulfilling that action. And one of the things he talks about even with doing stuff like that is kind of spacing or zoning out your your house. Um, like one of the best ways to kind of, do, um, to kind of implement certain habits is just having uh, specific spaces for specific reasons. Have um, set up a, a certain area to be like, this is the place I sit and read every day at this time. Like making certain zones for certain things. Like, uh, make sure you don't use your bed as a a place to just lounge and sit on your phone or do this because it will make you less likely to maybe actually go to bed and sleep. So there's just like little things you can do that kind of affect the way you handle your habits. So if you zone out certain areas, it's, it gives you the ability to kind of use your time more wisely and set up a habit as if I'm in this chair with my laptop this is the place I study or this is the place I read or this is where I practice guitar and there's just different ways to kind of help um just kind of help it more likely for you to successfully successfully implement certain habits and another one they talked about that I'm definitely going to use um is habit stacking so kind of the same thing as the habit implementation is if you already have a habit you're used to doing, which I've already started doing this myself, it it basically makes you where if you, you have this and it basically is like, okay, so after I do this habit, whatever it is, after current habit, I will blank. I will do the new habit. So it's like after I turn on the shower, I do five burpees after I lay down in bed for the night. I think of one positive thing that happened in the day. After I get in my car, I take three deep breaths. After I get home from a violin lesson, I take out my violin from its case and put it on its stand where I can see it. Just like little things to kind of make, um, just kind of make it easier to uh, adapt and add into your your habits. And another thing is uh, that he talks about with habit is cues. Cues are very important. And one of the main things that he talks about is the ability to just see whatever it, whatever it is that causes your cue. So real quick, I kind of just kind of blasted over this. I'm going to go over this now because I kind of forgot. So... This is how to create a good habit. These are his four laws to making a good habit. Law number one, make it obvious. Law number two, make it attractive. Law number three, make it easy. And law number four, make it satisfying. So with all of these, he he talks about different ways for you to kind of make it easier, better, and more likely for you to follow your habits. Or the habits you want to do, especially for a good habit. And part of that is just, um, like like you said, make it obvious. Make it, design your environment to make the cues more obvious and visible. If you can't see it, you're not going to do it. Like, implement, implementations, habit stacking, like that's all to make it obvious. Make it very aware of what it is you're trying to do and and go from there. 
another thing to make it easier for you to do is make it attractive. Use temptation bundling, pair an action you want to do with an action you need to do. So, um, uh, let's see, like one thing for me, I feel like I'm going to try doing as making it an actual habit is like, I like, uh, I like watching YouTube or I like watching movies or listening to podcasts, but I've developed a habit in particular with a podcast that I can't just sit there and listen to a podcast. I have to do something because I listen to podcasts at work. So it kind of, kind of weaved its way into just how I listen to podcasts. I have to be doing something, driving, working, something. So it's probably a good thing because I'm going to try implementing that with how I keep my house clean uh i'm gonna like start listening to a podcast or watching a video why and the only time i can i need to implement that a little better i'll be honest but this is the first week of trying to use some of these techniques to put put them into my life is like to do that and then when i'm doing those things listening to the podcast watching a video i work on doing the dishes or Stuff like that, just like or I fold clothes or I just little stuff like that or I just clean like on the weekends. I listen to a podcast and clean up around the house for an hour, like just like little stuff like that that kind of makes things more attractive to you because it's like, well, if I start cleaning, I can listen to the podcast. And for me, that definitely would work um, to an extent. I'm not I typically don't want to clean, but trying to change <laughs> that, that's all that's important and one of the reasons why with the podcast I feel weird listening to a podcast especially if there's no visual cue to just sit there because I feel like I need to do something and part of that is just from doing it at work if there's a visual cue I won't be as likely to get up and do something with my hands or do something else so it, it, there's just ways you kind of got to look at yourself and figure out what works best for you. Um, but another one when it comes to a making, make, make it more attractive is join a culture where you, your desired behavior is normal. So if you live in an area where people aren't necessarily super healthy or fit uh, or your family's portraying a habit you don't want try to get into a different group so it's kind of like the same thing is um which is probably a good thing like clicks in high school you got like the jocks you got the cheerleaders you got this and that it makes sense the nerds yeah they're the people you want to be around but it's not the people you necessarily want to be because no offense to people that were nerdy i was kind of nerdy but at the same time those people don't prioritize health and fitness and certain things where when you have a bunch of people that prioritize exercise, looking good, feeling healthy, and let's say being a part of some sport, it makes a community of people that prioritize the same thing. So it makes it easy for you to keep to those goals or standards to keep going. So it's kind of that same thing. So it's like same with working out. If you work out on your own, that's one thing. But if you work out with a group of people or around a group of people, that all work out at a gym, it kind of builds a different form of connection that you have with that task or habit. Another one is create a motivational ritual or motivation ritual, like do something you enjoy immediately before a difficult task. So uh, example, my brain, I can't think of one. Um, I don't know, like, uh, um, it, like take a what well, before mm. I think you could do it either way because I, I think it's kind of the same thing like if you if you do an exercise piece or do a lot of exercise and do good for the week some people will say oh well that means I deserve to eat ice cream or this and that and it gives you that motivation, but for the wrong thing because it kind of puts a vote in for two different identities. Do you want to be healthy or do you want to be overweight and eat desserts all the time? So it kind of puts you in two different paths to what you want to do. 
But if you take that same thing and it's like after a week of sticking to my diet, working out every day or whatever it is you tried setting for yourself, you go get a massage or you go have a nice bubble bath or something you really enjoy. It's a way to kind of make those goals more attractive for you or for you to stick to. And then another one, make it easy. Um, the third law. People think that making things lazy or easier for you to do is bad, and that's not something you should do. You should force yourself to do something that's hard. And it's like, yes, pushing yourself is good, but the human mind is constructed to make easy things the thing you want to do. Like, that's the whole reason habits and routine have become a thing, is it's things that you have done over and over again that has allowed your brain to make that habit or routine more automatic where it takes less energy for you to do it and less thought to use somewhere else. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if it's something good. If, like I said, if it's putting something you need to do closer to uh, something else or more easily to use, like he, uh, let me use an example. He talks about this in the book where he used to put his apples, and I've done the exact same thing, in the crisper drawer of your fridge. And him and myself never ate them. And part of that is you never saw them. And it's not like it's super hard to open up your fridge and open up the drawer and grab one. It's still pretty easy. But just not seeing it and it not being as easy as just grabbing it, you don't know it's there, you forget about it, and then you got to throw them away and you never eat them. So he decided to get a display bowl and put all his apples in there. And that just gave him the ability to see it every day and just to be able to use that and grab it immediately. So it's just, it's trying to create something that make just makes it easier. So part of that is reduce friction, decrease the number of steps between you and your good habits. Um, prime your environment and prepare your environment to make good future actions easier. So like the thing with the apples, let's say, or uh, master the decisive moment, optimize the small choices that deliver outsized impacts. It's all about making those small choices every day to slowly be more positive towards what you wanna do. Because like he said at the beginning, it's, it's about building that over and over again and compounding it to make it more worthwhile. Or something that's really easy is use the two percent or two percent. <laughs> use the two minute rule. Downscale your habits into something that can be done in two minutes or less. Like he talked about, um, people that are trying to run uh, more. Like put your shoes on, your running shoes on. That's it. Do little habits. Like I've both read, read and heard a story similar to what he said in his book and um it was uh someone went to a gym for like two or five minutes never worked out for almost a month just went to the gym after work or whenever it was and eventually it became so normal and such a routine to go to the gym that at one point all he had to do was be like well i'm already here i drive here and go here every day might as well start picking up some weights and working out so it slowly just, it's about making those habits so normal that it, you're already doing the beginning stages of whatever it is. You might as well keep working towards it. But it's just kind of building that routine in your head to make it easier for you over time. Or um, automate your habits. Invest in technology and one-time purchases that unlock or that lock in future behavior. Um, so I'm trying to remember what he uses for an example on that one. Um, oh, I really don't know. But it's like you use use um, some sort of technology as some sort of reminder or something that helps keep track of certain things. So just checking in on stuff will kind of give you that. Um, like let's say you have a Fitbit or something and you kind of see some of your stats. Just something like that that helps track your progression makes it easier for you to see things and keep you motivated to keep doing certain habits. 
and another one, the fourth law. Make it satisfying. Use reinforcement. Give yourself an immediate reward when you complete your habit. So you're going to have some sort of reward no matter what. Some of it can be psychological or how you feel or certain things just from doing certain stuff. But sometimes you got to give yourself some little reward. It doesn't mean it should be something like, like I said earlier, oh, I just worked out, let's go get a donut, but it should be something that you enjoy that kind of connects that reward to that habit that just gives you more motivation to do it. It's all about just kind of keeping you online to just keep doing those things. Um, make doing nothing enjoyable. When avoiding a bad habit, designed a way to see the benefits. Oh, wait. When avoiding a bad habit, design a way to see the benefits. So part of the thing he talks about, especially with people that are super, super successful, it's like you got to get used to doing the boring stuff that over time will create amazing results. And part of the thing he talks about is like there's a difference between action and prevention. He said the worst thing with procrastination is you think you got to be perfect what you start and I a hundred percent admit that I do this all the time with certain things and part of it is you just got to start doing it and some of those things I'm going to implement with this podcast in general or content with this podcast kind of like last week I I think there's times that I need to make a podcast perfect and plan it out but you know when it comes down to it it doesn't have to be that way last week I had no idea what I was going to talk about Now, was it the best podcast ever? No, but that's fine. I just did it. It's just being there and being um, not, um, it's just doing it. Like being repetitive is what's good because over time you will learn and grow from the amount of stuff you do. If you just sit there and you want to make something perfect, it makes you procrastinate because it gives you a reason never to start. But if you just start and try and slowly but surely just repetitively do it over and over again, even if it's not that good, over time you'll learn to make it better. And that's kind of the thing I'm going to try doing with the, the Instagram. It's like at one point I don't got to worry about what we post when it comes to doing stuff for the Instagram. I don't need to make it perfect. I don't need to make it amazing. As long as I start the habit of maybe posting every day and doing something, it's getting that into momentum to slowly just make it easier and better at doing everything. So it's just that kind of thing. There's just little stuff you can do that just kind of builds over time. Um, Okay, so another way to make it satisfying, use a habit tracker. Keep track of your habit streak and don't break the chain. One of the things he, well, I guess he kind of talks about this too, is I'll just go ahead and read it off now. Never miss twice. When you forget to do a habit, make sure you get back on track immediately. So if you miss one day, don't miss the second day. I know I've made those mistakes. Like I missed on one habit I'm trying to do yesterday. I need to make, I have to make sure I do it today. So there's little things that it's like, just make sure you keep progressing. And part of it is just doing it. Just having action to start doing something is better than not doing it at all. So don't, worry about trying to make things perfect just keep working and that's that's like the great thing about life is the earlier you start these things yeah it's not going to be great when you first start but 10 15 years down the road it's going to have such a major impact depending on what it is you're trying to implement to be a part of you or identify with that it just has such an amazing impact on your life and you won't realize it now but you'll see it 15 years from now so it's just it's stuff like that but okay so now that we've kind of gone over ways to make good habits let's go over how to break a bad habit so it's very simple it's the inverse of all those laws so the inverse of law one make it invisible reduce exposure or remove the cues of your bad habits from your environment So if there's stuff you do every day, hide it, hide it away. Don't make it obvious. Don't make it visible. If, if, oh, I'm trying to think if there's, 
I'm trying to think of anything I do that's like that, but I know there probably is, but I can't think of anything at the moment. But if there's something that you do every day that's not necessarily a good habit, get rid of it if it's nothing you need or want or hide it. If it's something you do need at your house or something, depending on what it is, hide the remote, hide the TV remote, do stuff like that. Make it where it's not visible for you to keep doing. Um, make it unattractive, reframe your mindset, highlight the benefits of avoiding the bad habits. So make it obvious, like make it in your head to be like, if I do this habit, it's not good for me. Like it's not worth me doing cause it's not going to help me. It's not going to, it's not going to do, it's not going to have any benefits. So you just got to kind of change your mindset. The inverse of the third law, make it difficult increase friction increase the number of steps between you and your bad habits use a commitment device restrict your future choices to the ones that benefit you so it's just you you got to make it harder for you to actually get into those habits again it's not saying because you don't necessarily lose though those habits they're always going to be there and programmed into your mind at one point because you've done it for so long depending on what it is but it's just making it harder for you to do it and that will make it less likely for you to keep going. Make it unsatisfying, inversion of the fourth law. Get an accountability partner, ask someone to watch your behavior, create a habit contract, make the cost of your bad habits public and painful. So that alone is one of the templates he uses as an example is a habit contract make a contract for someone to sign you or someone else that keeps you accountable to what you do it's about the accountability of keeping to certain habits i was so surprised or not so surprised but it was very surprising that there was so many similarities between this book and david goggins that it it kind of shocked me um just by some of the rules he set out to make actually had such a large impact on an effect just from habit like he said put on your running shoes every day he's like and even part of the things he talks about he literally says he's like there's times i woke up and i put on my running shoes and i've sat there for 30 minutes because i didn't want to go run but just being there and doing the part of putting on his running shoes made it where he's going to it's just he had to get himself to do it or one of his main things that i really do want to start implementing myself is his accountability mirror it's kind of the same thing as what they just talked about keep yourself accountable one of the main things that david goggins talked about as one of his challenges was write down the shit you want to do write down the goals write down the i the stuff you want to identify with like how do you want to change your identify who do you want to become how do you get there Write that shit down, throw it in a mirror. You're going to see that mirror every damn day. So then at one point, look at that mirror and be honest with yourself. Are you working towards that goal sitting on that mirror? If not, keep yourself accountable and keep fucking going. And it's kind of the same thing where it's like if you do that and you set small goals, it doesn't have to be anything major. In this, he talks about goals that are great. But you can't rely just on the goals you set. You got to rely on the habits to get you to those goals. Is making those slight changes to slowly get you there that's the important thing, not necessarily focusing on the end result. And and that's part of the, the thing of like people say it's like don't don't focus on the the don't focus on the end goal or the accomplishment. Focus on the journey to get there. Because if you enjoy the journey by making the small changes, it won't. the goal itself won't be the highlight of the stuff you do. Most people talk about once you hit certain goals is when, if that's the only thing they focus on, that's when they feel the most um, confused because they don't have something to keep them going. People that make a goal and then hit it and stop instead of actually making a habit to just keep growing and developing that habit and keep the goal moving keep the goal post moving and just form a habit instead of a one-time thing it has such a large effect on how you look at certain things so it's like like what he said keep an accountability mirror it has a lot 
to do with like the habit forming. Yeah, I didn't realize it at the time, but a lot of the stuff he does is habit forming. And part of the thing that I've realized with this is repetition is more important than than the like being perfect. Just doing it over and over again. And the more you do it, like people say, oh, it takes 20 days to make a habit. It takes 30 days to make a habit. It depends on how often you do the habit. If you do the habit every day, yeah, maybe you do it once a day. Maybe in 30 days you can make that habit. If it's something you do once a month, it's not going to be the same. It just depends on how many times you do that habit, on how quickly it's going to actually stick. And so you just got to be repetitive in whatever it is you do. Like, um, one of the things he talks about is the shape of human behavior. Like, one of the things I've never thought of, but the primary axis, like, this is his example. The primary axis of Europe and Asia is east and west. As for Americas, the Americas and Africa, it's north and south. So this leads to a wider range of climates up and down in the Americas instead of across Europe and Asia. And as a result, it caused agriculture to spread nearly twice as fast through Europe and Asia than it did elsewhere. And the behavior of farmers, even across hundreds or thousands of years, was constrained to the amount of friction in the environment. So it's just little things that have a larger impact. If there's more friction and doing whatever it is you want to do, it's going to cause slower results. So you got to kind of change change what it is to make it easier for you to just kind of keep going and make those changes. And then one thing he talks about is like motivation. Motivation is amazing. But you got to find the right thing and something he talks about that I've never realized but is very true and I see it even with myself at my own work that I don't have at the moment is motivation. I'm trying to figure that out. I'll get through it but you know (laughs) we all got our shit and he talks about the Goldilocks rule and there's actually a study that it's you want something to be 4% difficult more difficult than what you know or how to do is you want you want the Goldilocks rule between something that's easy or too hard. You can't have something either way. If you have something right in the middle, it's going to be perfect, and it's going to keep you motivated and keep striving. It's kind of like in sports. If you're playing with if you're playing tennis with a child, it, it's you're going to get bored super easily because there's no challenge. But if you play with a professional there you're also going to get bored or just give up because you realize there's no chance of you winning and it's because the skill levels is just so different to who you're up against but if you have someone that's in a similar skill level to you you're super motivated and you're not going to give up because it's going to go back and forth when it comes to points you might win a few they might win a few and it's going to make you more motivated because it gives you that realization that you can win, but to do so, you got to put in your effort and you got to focus. If you don't have that focus, you're not going to do as well. So you got to kind of find your own Goldilocks rule depending on what it is you're working on and what it is to kind of make it just slightly difficult enough to keep you going. And one of, another, one of the other things he talks about is mastering one habit. That's good and that's great, but mastering skills is, I feel like, more important because you can build off of them. Mastering one habit is good, but then it, you need to take that habit and put it into something else just to kind of keep going. It's kind of like the goal-setting situation is you got to kind of keep progressing it in some way or another. Um. So it, it, it's quite amazing. There's so many ways I'm trying to use this on my own. And like one of the things he says even with, um, and part of this, I guess, has to do with fitness. But one of the ways he talks about is like the human mind in the way it's constructed has not changed within 50 or more thousand years is the exact same as our ancestors but 
they never had to deal with the temptations that we have today when it comes to technology and let's say unhealthy foods and this and that like he talked about how companies actually use the most like most stone aged part of the brain to keep you more likely to eat unhealthy foods and like one of the things he talks about is like contrast and consistency is and I realized when they said that that it's like I felt that same way is like there's a reason an Oreo has two crunchy soft cookies on the outside but a cream filling on the inside it's because that change of consistency keeps your brain more occupied and more enjoyable so you'll eat more and more cookies where if you just ate let's say uh, kale or broccoli or chicken it's the same texture over and over again so you're going to be less likely to eat as much as that because your brain will get bored than you will from eating a cookie because there's not a change in consistency so there's it's not your fault to be stuck in the ways you are now it's not your fault that you have a habit to go towards your phone and be on social media and to want junk food these companies have in the modern world has designed this to kind of go on your most deep instinct levels in your brain to kind of contractually get you into these bad habits because it makes you money or makes you money makes them money it's not good for you but they don't care because they're trying to be a profitable company and they want to make sales so you got to realize that some of these things aren't your fault this is just stuff we have to deal with when it comes to living in modern society that our ancestors never had to deal with and like one of the things with junk food is our brain was wired to crave and want sugar fatty and fat and carbs why do you think junk foods are basically made out of sugar fat and carbs because it's the thing our brain craves because back in the day when we didn't have enough food getting something like that was a luxury so we craved that because if we could find that that possibly could mean the difference between living and sur or starving where now there's a surplus of food but we still have that same biological inkling to still want those type of foods so there's things you got to learn to just kind of develop and change how you look at situations and how you, you got to realize it's not your fault that you've fallen into these habits necessarily some of the stuff are are things that probably started when you were a kid that you had no clue you would still be doing now as an adult so it's something you got to identify and decide if it's something you need to keep because it's positive or change because it's negative it's all about making those little changes every day and sticking to those to make a large difference years from now. It doesn't matter if you use that in business, your personal life. It doesn't matter what it is. You could do that with work, f fitness, exercise, cleaning, like companies. It, it doesn't matter. You can do anything like this, and it will have a major impact. It's all about making those little changes now that will have large results years from now so I do personally encourage any of you guys that are listening to read this book buy this book like read it it's amazing go to this guy's website I'm pretty sure he posts blogs and stuff every week I don't know I'm probably gonna look into some of his other books if he has any because this was kind of it was really eye-opening and he brings in very easy ways to implement it into your life so I encourage anyone that is curious about changing some of the habits they have and are self-aware of some of the issues or failures that they've made with their own habits and want to change I encourage you to read this book because it just gives you such a uh, great blueprint to kind of build off of and you can use some of the templates that he makes like he has a journal that i'm probably going to buy where i can put in habits and keep track of every day i do these habits and start keeping accountability to myself to hit these things 
I also recognize that there's a lot of things I want to change um, with my personal habits that I can't necessarily do all at once. So I got to take it bit by bit until it slowly becomes easier and gradually change and make things just better to create a better version of myself. It all starts with making little changes and having major impacts. It's the same thing with saving and investing. It's the same thing with fitness. It's the same thing with being a cl- clean person. It, it's it can be it can be implemented in any situation, and it's just something you got to realize. And that's one thing. With the more I kind of learn about human psychology and different topics I'm interested in, there's so many things that kind of stretch over so many topics that are some of the same fundamental aspects of life that you got to learn and take control of. And I mean, that that's one thing. If you guys saw my post on Instagram or have listened to the trailer that's now on Spotify that I made yesterday, that's kind of the same thing I want to provide here. It's about learning and growth. And, and if I can read this book and give you guys the temptation or give you guys some of the lessons from the book to implement in your own life, or encourage you guys to go read that book and kind of make some of the same changes with yourself personally, that's what I'm here to do. Like, I want to build a community of people that want to grow every day and to keep pushing themselves to reach whatever goals it is. If you want to be a professional chef, read a book about, like, cooking. Like, do little things. Just keep keep it up. Like, learn. Keep progressing. Don't plateau necessarily because like yeah you're gonna plateau at one point depending on what it is but you gotta keep working on it no matter what even if it gets boring and you're doing the same thing keep it up because eventually it will get to the point where it's gonna be worthwhile and you're still gonna be better than you ever were or anyone else because you kept going through the boring stuff and you were able to deal with those boring times because you do it every day but guess what you're gonna be so much better for it so I hope you guys are really enjoying the podcast. There's a lot of stuff I want to do to this eventually and ways I want to change it and grow it over over time. I want to eventually get a studio kind of put together, get a visual aspect of this, um, and just make little changes along the way. Like It's just learning over time what's what works, what I like, and you just kind of got to figure it out on your own with everything you do. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. So I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys have been enjoying the podcast. If so, please follow on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, I would love to hit 50 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be amazing. We're at 15 right now on YouTube, but just in general, I, I, I love you guys' support. And if you want to comment or message on Instagram or the poll on Spotify, please do. I I love getting feedback from you guys. So please do that and uh but I think that's it for this week and I will uh I'll try getting a, a possible guest on for next week. I hope you guys enjoyed. I I certainly did. Reading these books has definitely had an impact on how I look at my own own life. So hopefully it has a chance for you to kind of do the same and um i'll see you guys all in the next one peace out everybody